All right, so after the familiar opening and narration from John Larroquette, we get an on-screen date telling us that it's August 18th, 1973. Now let's backpedal real quick and talk about this John Larroquette narration because it's pretty iconic. Um, this is pretty much uh, a trend that started after this movie. A lot of horror films started doing this. The old opening scroll. Um, what do you think of it? Obviously, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Uh, our younger selves believed we bought into it, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I a dig it, and b thought it was a missed opportunity. He didn't come back for the second one. Yeah, he just has a very uh, distinct voice. Uh, like it, I can always remember his voice. It always stands out to me. And I agree. I think it adds uh, just credibility to it that you got like this. Um, like baritone narration at the beginning with the scroll. Uh, you know, it, it just, it adds to it and it's iconic. I mean, I've heard it like parried it in different places. Like it's just a part of the movie. Like I can always just hear it in my head, even if uh, I don't remember the exact words, but uh, that's just one part of the film that's always stuck with me. When you think John Larroquette, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, I mean, for me, it's this, but, uh, Outside, yeah, sure outside of this, what are you thinking? I don't know. To be honest with you, nothing really. I mean, unless I'm mis- like not thinking of something, this is really the only thing I think of when I think of it. I would have picked you as a Richie Rich fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen Richie Rich. I wouldn't necessarily say uh, I'm a huge fan, but <laughs> Richie Rich. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. For me, it's Night Court. That was probably my first, I don't know, four-way in to his uh, career at a young age. Um, now, either that or Stripes. You know, it's not like he had like the most explosive career, uh, but I feel like the ones that he did, he made it count. He was also in a very... I mean, oh, that's right, he was also in the Twilight Zone movie. But also, he was in that Kirstie Alley movie, um, fucking uh, Madhouse, in uh, the early 90s. And also, he was uncredited uh, actor slash zombie killer thing in the uh, opening prologue to uh, Demon Knight, if you recall, Texas from uh, Tales from the Crypt. I miss a Texas Chainsaw huh. Massacre, both T's. Yeah, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Demon Knight. He was the the guy. Kripke was like, "You call that acting?" He's like, "As a matter of fact, it was acting." So yeah, yeah, I. I never watched Night Court, so I guess maybe that's why uh, it doesn't really come to mind for much else for me, because that's just one show I just never watched, just for whatever reason. I just never saw reruns of it, really. I just never watched it. It was always on NBC when I was growing up. Um, I just remember watching, uh, especially uh, like when I was like six or seven years old, uh, towards the tail end of the season. Uh, it got picked up at syndic- syndication, and it was always on TV. I, f- I felt, you know, as a child, a lot of episodes. Not that I recall the events of the episodes. I didn't like watch it like that. It was just always on. So that's you know, Night Court definitely comes to mind. Him, Richard Mole, and uh, uh, Christ, uh, Harry, yeah, Harry Anderson. A lot of people on that show. I literally never wanted to punch a movie in its face more than I had last night. Definitely worth your time. It's it's definitely worth revisiting. 15 minutes in, I'm like, uh, Dorothy, we're not in Oakland anymore. It's in 4K, buddy. Check it out. It was kind of like an afternoon, you like, drive time type thing. Or like the type of podcast you listen to at work. <laughs>